What's up, everybody? Nathaniel Morton here with NathanielMorton.com, helping you get bigger, stronger, faster, and more explosive. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. We have a live vertical jump q and I'm going to be answering most of the questions on vertical jump, but also any random questions that you want to ask in the feed, go ahead and ask those questions. I'm going to be prioritizing the questions that people ask me on Instagram. So if you are not following following me on Instagram, go over to Instagram. My, my username is at Nathaniel Morton. That's how you figure out when I'm going to do these lives because I put it on my story. I say, hey, I'm going to go live in less than an hour or hey, I'm going to go live at 7 p.m. on YouTube at this time. But go ahead, follow me on Instagram. That's where you can submit your questions for this or you can just submit your questions in the live chat. Um, but questions from Instagram will be top priority and then I will answer your questions um, from the live chat. And then I also have some questions from the last Vertical Jump Q&A that I did. Um, okay, Jalen, I'm going to get to you in a second. Let me ask, let me answer this first question from Instagram. First question from Instagram was, how do you stay focused and not about the negative? How do you stay focused and not about the negative? Okay, so when you are focused on negative things or when negative thoughts come into your head, for myself, I don't do this anymore, but I used to do this. I would literally wrap a rubber band around my wrist and anytime I had a negative thought, anytime a negative thought wanted to float up in my head, I would snap the rubber band because we teach ourselves negative thoughts mean immediate pain and then I would switch it to a positive thought. So anytime I thought negative, I would use that as a trigger, a habit loop trigger to think something positive instead. And when you think something positive, don't think about don't think about things that have to do with your talent or your ability level right now, such as, oh, I am great at basketball or I have the best life in the world. Think about your potential. Think about things um, that are related to potential and what you could be. Because if you just say, I am the best basketball player in the world, well, you might not be. You might suck at basketball right now, but that doesn't mean that you can never get good at basketball. So when you have a negative thought, snap that rubber band, immediately switch it to a positive thought about what your potential can be. Human beings are are basically limitless. Human beings can learn any skill. I can get better at basketball. I can build more muscle. I can increase my vertical jump. All of these things are true about your potential. So that's what you need to do when you have negative thoughts, immediately snap the rubber band or use it to switch into a positive mindset. Okay. Next question from Instagram. Then I'll take some from the live feed. Okay. This isn't a question. This is a statement. Don't delete your next YouTube live Q and A. It was really good, and I wanted to go back and take notes. The reason that I did a live Q and A last time and I didn't post it, I deleted it. That was because my phone died, and I will not make that mistake again because I charged my phone. But my phone died, and when I charged my phone and turned it back on, it basically crashed the live stream, and I couldn't stop it. The live stream just kept going, but I wasn't I wasn't here. It was a blank screen, and I couldn't get it. I couldn't stop it. I couldn't end the live stream. So um, that's why I deleted it because the only way to stop it was to delete it. But this one, after I do this live q and I will leave this up on YouTube so that you can go back and take notes. All right, let's take some live questions. Um, let's see. Okay. From Jalen Kirk, hey Nathaniel, on a one foot jump, should I go heel to ball of the foot on the last plant step or just ball of the foot on a one foot jump? Should I go heel to ball of the foot? Wow, you're really getting detailed. Let me try it right now. Should I go heel? Yeah, I would go heel to ball of the foot, okay? Uh, you could do either. I would go heel to ball of the foot though. I have really never thought about it in that much detail, um, but practice both. Try both. See which feels more natural to you and do that one, okay? But I think, I don't, I don't know that you need to be thinking about that much, but that is good that you're that detail-oriented and, and you're that um, on top of your technique. Next question from Josh Too Nice. 
Um, by the way, I follow Josh Too Nice on YouTube. That's my buddy, and he does funny vlogs. Um, the one that you did where you put your <laughs> you put your roommate's car on Craigslist or something for two hundred dollars, and he was getting all his phone calls. That was hilarious. So Josh Too Nice, I follow that boy on YouTube. What do you want to do for your birthday, bro? For my birthday, I want to work even harder. That's what I want to do for my birthday. All ages gaming. Hi, Nate. I'm not doing summer rec this year. All ages gaming. I ran a summer rec program for him. Uh, I'm not doing it either. I'm doing my own thing. Doing the YouTube. Next question. From skies to sunset rise. Hey, bro. Can I burn a lot of days fast if I have... An 80 pound weight vest and wear it while I'm doing burpees. Can I burn a lot of days fast? Calories, do you mean? Can I burn a lot of calories fast? Fat. Okay, he just clarified. Can I burn a lot of fat fast if I have an 80 pound weight vest that is actually very heavy and I'm doing burpees? Yes, absolutely. Burpees are a crazy form of cardio. I personally hate burpees. I do them all the time when I'm doing hit cardio. Um, so yeah, what you can do, I have a burpees and box jump workout that I love to do where I do 10 burpees every minute on the minute and on the next minute I do 10 box jumps. So 10 burpees, then you rest for the remainder of time. Once the clock hits two minutes, you do 10 box jumps and you repeat that for about 10 minutes with an 80 pound weight vest on that's going to be a crazy good workout, hit cardio and yes, you will burn a lot of fat fast. Jay Baller. Jay Baller, um, I answered your question already. Not, see, not sure if you were here in the live chat when I answered that one. Um, but Jay Baller, just really quickly, his question was, how do you stay focused and not about the negative? Jay Baller, Jeremy, um, okay, you weren't in here. So how do you stay focused and not about the negative? So when a negative thought floats into your head, what I used to do, I told everybody, is is I had a rubber band around my wrist. I don't do it anymore because I don't think that negative anymore. But anytime a negative thought would float into my head, I would snap the rubber band, teaching my brain that negative thoughts equal immediate pain. Immediately, you get some pain, so don't fucking do that anymore. Don't have those negative thoughts. Immediate pain, and then I would use that as a habit loop trigger to think positive. So. Anytime, every single time a negative thought floats into your head, you snap the rubber band, say fuck you negative thoughts, and you immediately switch it to the positive. Something about your potential. Not about, not about talent or skill or how good you are right now. Not about, don't start thinking, don't start saying empty words to yourself like, I am the best at basketball. I'm going to go to the NBA. Just talk about potential. I have the potential to go to the NBA if I work my fucking face off. I have the potential to learn anything because I'm a human being. Human beings are adaptations, adaptation machines. We can learn anything we want to. We can learn all the skills. I can learn how to dribble better than anybody, how to shoot better than anybody. I can, I have the potential to become the best basketball player in the motherfucking world because I am a human being. I can learn all of those skills through hard work and effort. So negative thought, say fuck you, snap the rubber band, positive thought about your potential. Um, but that's my answer, Answer, Jay Baller, my brother. Um, okay, let me take a question from the last live, or the last q and I had. And some of these questions I'm going to repeat. I'm sorry if you were in my last live Q&A, but I'm going to repeat repeat them because I didn't upload my last live Q&A because my phone died and the stream crashed. So here's a question from the last one. If I'm scheduled to perform a vertical jump workout and I've rested my legs for two days, but my muscles are still just a little tired, not sore, just not feeling fresh, should I get in my routine or wait a day to feel 100% instead of 90%? So basically, you do a vertical jump workout. You rest for two days, and then you go to do another vertical jump workout, but you say, man, I'm not feeling 100%. I'm only feeling 90%. My answer to you is that, personally for me, I would do it. I would do it, but for you, 
I would rest another day because overtraining is a real thing. When we are breaking down our muscles, right? When we are in the gym, we are actually breaking down our muscles. We are not building muscle. So if you do a hard, intense vertical jump workout on a Monday and you break down your muscles all the way to here, and then on Tuesday you rest and you get your muscles recovered to here, Wednesday you rest, get your muscles recovered to here, and on Thursday, your muscles aren't recovered to the point that they need to be and you break it down again with another workout, you're never letting your body fully recover past the point so you can grow and get stronger and faster and more explosive and have a higher vertical jump. You're not letting your muscles recover to that point so you just beat your muscles down again before you are at the point where you actually make the gains. Okay, so that's what that's what happens when you go into a workout. You break your muscle down in the gym doing your workout, and then you have to wait for it to recover past the point that you were before you did that workout. So breaking it down beforehand is not going to be beneficial. So I would just, when in doubt, wait an extra rest day. It's probably, rest days are very beneficial. And just because you're resting doesn't mean that you're not doing anything. Just hit some upper body. Okay, do some upper body, do some stretching and foam rolling, go play a little bit of basketball, shoot around, work on your skills, do what you need to do. But hitting, you should just wait that extra rest day just to be safe, to allow your muscles to grow past the point where you were before. <sighs> Skies to sunset rise. I believe if I use the weight vest too much, it may be harmful to the joints. So how can I use the 80 pound vest to increase my vertical as fast as possible with not causing much harm if possible. So the way that you fuck up your joints with a weight vest or ankle weights, please don't use ankle weights, guys. There's not, you're not meant to have weight strapped to the end of your leg, okay? A weight vest is different because it's strapped to your core. Your core is your center of gravity. Um, so use a weight vest instead of ankle weights if you can. But even if you're using ankle weights or a weight vest, the way that you fuck up your body by using a weight vest is when you impact the ground after your jump. You don't get it by jumping in the air with the weight. That's when you that's when you increase your vertical. When you as soon as you jump on the takeoff, you increase your strength and your explosiveness when you have that vest on or doing normal plyometrics. It's when you land on the ground that messes up your joints. So if you're repeatedly landing on the ground on your joints and your knees and your hips and your ankles are like, what the fuck are you doing to us? That's when you hurt it, okay? What you can do to stop that is doing box jumps. When you do a box jump with the weight vest on, Box jumps, and it doesn't have to be crazy high. If you got an 80 pound weight vest on, then your box jumps aren't gonna be as high as they would if you were just body weight. Do a low box jump and try to work your way up from there. But I would do box jumps with the 80 pound weight vest. I would do five sets of 10 reps if that's all you're doing. If you're gonna do more, you can lower the sets. But I would do sets of 10, eight to 10 reps. And it's not gonna mess up your joints because you are jumping from here up to here, it's not, it's not that much of an impact once you get up there, especially if they're soft, like these vertical jump boxes that I'm using as a tripod right now, okay? They're gonna be soft, um, or they're gonna be, it's gonna be less of an impact. It's when you don't have a box and you do like a hurdle jump, you jump all the way over the hurdle and you come all the way down, boom, onto the ground, that's what messes up your joints. So if you're doing box jumps, that's a great thing to do. Um, we got one from, okay, Chan, keep it up. If I'm training every day, it doesn't affect me. Uh, I need a little bit more specifics on that. Well, it doesn't affect you. Um, okay, next question. What is the best variant of deadlifts? Okay, we all know deadlifts are an excellent way to increase your vertical jump. Deadlifts are great for your vertical jump. Um, they work your posterior chain, they strengthen. Deadlifts strengthen everything. They strengthen your calves, they strengthen your hamstrings, your glutes, your lower back, okay, um, your, your arms because you're holding the bar. They literally, deadlift is a full body compound movement. So. Um, and your posterior chain is what you want to get stronger when you're talking about your vertical jump. Increase the strength and explosiveness of your posterior chain and you will increase your vertical jump. So the best variant of deadlifts 
for an athlete is trap bar deadlifts or conventional deadlifts when, you're, when your feet are closer together. When you're doing sumo stance and your feet are spread wide apart, um, that's, that's still going to be good. You're still gonna increase your strength, but a conventional or a trap bar deadlift is more athletic. It's more athletic of a stance. Okay, never in, an, in, in, never in sports do you have your feet spread like that to do any jumps or any runs or anything. Maybe like to, to field a baseball, but that, still. Um, do, do conventional or trap bar deadlifts. It's going to transfer more to a vertical jump and to you being athletic. Next question. <sighs> hey, this is from Skies to Sunset Rise. Not the live one, but this is the one you asked in my last video. Hey, Mr. Morton, question for next Q&A. If you have a slow metabolism and gain fat fast, but can't burn it or lose it fast, which would be the best, fastest way to burn fat fast so you can slim down quick so that vertical jump and explosive training is more effective? Thank you so much. So if you have a slow metabolism, you gain fat fast, you can't burn it or lose it fast, what would be the best way to burn fat? So first of all, for everybody out there, you need to be sleeping. This is like the foundation. Sleep and wake up without an alarm. Sleep is like number one. That's like you're building a house. The foundation has to be solid first. For me, sleep is the most important. So the day before, Stop looking at your phone before you go to bed. Stop watching TV before you go to bed. Stop looking at uh, the, the, the YouTube channels. Don't even watch my videos before bed. Don't get any of that blue light into your, your system. It just wakes you up. It makes you have worse sleep than if you didn't look at all those devices. Then, after you, you're not looking at your phone, stop drinking caffeine after 12 noon. Caffeine has a six-hour half-life, so if at 2 p.m. you drink 100 milligrams of caffeine at um, 8 p.m. Is that six hours? Yeah, I'm terrible at math. 8 p.m. or whenever you're going to go to bed, you're going to have, you're still going to have caffeine, 50 milligrams of caffeine still circulating through your system when you're trying to sleep. Then don't wake up with an alarm. Do not use an alarm. I do not use an alarm whatsoever. I also go to work at 8.30 in the morning and I wake up at four. So sometimes if I'm really tired, I'll wake up at five, but I let myself wake up naturally. So let's, let's focus here. We're talking about how to improve your metabolism and burn fat faster. Sleep is number one. You need your good sleep. After you get your good sleep, it's gonna be nutrition. You need to be fueling yourself with fruits and vegetables and natural foods. And for, for complex carbs, you need sweet potatoes. You need brown rice, okay? For your healthy, unsaturated fats, you need nuts. You need almonds, walnuts, avocados, okay? You need healthy oils for your proteins. You need lean ground beef. You need lean chicken. You need... Um, like good healthy steak, you need good proteins, um, you need eggs, you need salmon and fish, okay? You need to be fueling your body with nutrient-dense foods, nutrient-dense foods. So that just means it has a lot of nutrients packed into a small amount of calories. If you eat salmon, it's going to be about 100 calories, but it's going to have so many omega-3s and nutrients packed into it. If you eat a Snickers, it's going to be whatever, 120, 180 calories. I don't know what a Snickers is, but it's not going to have any nutrients packed into it. It's just empty calories. So you need to have your sleep down first. Then you need to have your nutrition down. Then you need the proper weight. You need the proper training. So you just asked me a question on here about a weight vest. You can use your weight vest and do hit cardio, high intensity interval training, 10 burpees, 10 box jumps every minute on the minute, or 10 burpees, 10 jumping jacks with your weighted vest on. Okay. So kill the game like that. Also drink a gallon of water a day. That's going to speed up your metabolism. Squeeze some fresh lemon in it. That will also help Help, but you need to get your metabolism right. Try also try to eat the same amount of foods every day. If you can stay consistent with how much food you actually eat, that is going to help. It's when one day you're at 5,000 calories, the next day you're at 1,800 calories, then you're at 3,400 calories, then you're at 2,600 calories. That just messes with your body and it, it fucks with your metabolism. So sleep, nutrition, and then exercise. Okay, let's see if we got any light questions. All right. Um, 
Can you save this live? Yeah, I'm sorry I, I, I'm sorry that I deleted the last one. My phone died and I couldn't end it. From 1K Manny, quick question. Should I train my vertical every day? I'm 6'1 and can't dunk. I'm getting pretty desperate. I really want to throw down what is my best bet. Okay, 1K Manny, no, do not train your vertical jump every single day. Depends on, clarify for me in the chat, if you could, what type of vertical jump training you are doing. Is it body weight or is it weight training? Um, but either way, um, you need to you need to be doing uh, vertical jump training two to three times per week. This is what I do. On Monday, I do a weight training, vertical jump training workout. I do squats. I do one leg RDLs. I do hyper extensions. I do... Um, I do lunges. I do things that are going to increase my strength and my explosiveness of my lower body, my posterior chain, and my core. Okay? So um, I do body weight only right now, says 1K Manny. So here, I would do it three times a week. Okay? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or even more beneficial than that might be Monday, Thursday, Sunday. And then repeat every two days. So Monday, Thursday, Sunday. Once you get to Sunday, let two days go by. Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday. So every two days, you are hitting vertical jump body weight training. Okay. In between that, you are stretching. You are foam rolling. You are getting good sleep. You are drinking one gallon of water every single day. You are eating lean, healthy sources of food. You are getting one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, but no, do not do weight training every single, or I'm sorry, do not do vertical jump training every single day. You have to let your muscles recover just like with any other sort of training. Um, they got to recover or else you're going to be overtraining and your vertical jump will go down. Your vertical jump will go down. So um, either every other day or every two days, hit your vertical jump training with your body weight. Also, for anybody there, comment jump in this feed if you would like a free body weight vertical jump training program and do not have that already. Next question. I'm going to go for about 30 minutes on this live and then I'm going to end it. Um, you're welcome, Manny. You got this. 6-1, you'll be thrown down soon if you follow that advice. Also, do some weight training if you can. Do some weight training. Um, Isaiah commented jump. He wants that program. I'll send it to you after this. Next question. Can you increase your vertical more than three inches in two months? I actually did a full YouTube video on this. So all that I will say is yes, but I'll teach you how to increase your vertical jump more than three inches in two months um, in that video when I post it. Isaiah says, do you have a weight training program too? I do have a weight training program. It is available at www.nathanielmorton.com. It is $50. However, and while I do feel bad because a lot of people have paid the $50 for that, so for me to give it out for free, I feel some type of way. Also, charging money for my programs is how I eat. It's, it's how I, I, got, I got a family to feed, okay? I don't really got a family, but... It's how I continue my business. I can't run my business unless I sell shit. I can't, like, I need to sell shit to keep my business going. So it's $50 on my website. However, if anybody has Instagram, you can follow me at Nathaniel Morton, N-A-T-H-A-N-A-E-L, Morton, um, on Instagram. And if you comment on my most recent post and you say, jump, I will send you the weight training vertical jump program for free. Weight training vertical jump for free. If you follow me on Instagram and say jump. Also call me ugly or something too. Be like, you ugly ass. All right. Next question. From Flycraft, how to recover from patellar tendonitis without stopping training. Flycraft, I never stopped my training, not once. I even told my physical therapist when I went to physical therapy for the time that I did, I said, I am not stopping training. I'm not gonna stop squatting. I'm not gonna stop playing basketball. I play in three basketball leagues. I'm not gonna stop doing vertical jump training. I am not stopping anything. And he said, well, that's okay because you can still cure your patellar tendonitis and 
continue with your training. The way that you do that is by working on your knees every single day. Now, here's what I do still to this day, because if I'm going to be doing vertical jump training and jumping around and playing in three basketball leagues, I'm 27. I'm not 21 years old anymore. I can't, I can't do what I, what I used to do without doing all of my knee exercises and my stretches. Here's what I do to continue training while you have patellar tendonitis. Here's what I personally do. I do, I have a few routines. I have a routine that I posted. I'm sure you, you saw that on YouTube. It has the glute bridges and the clams and the lateral side steps. It's with the mini band and then the TKEs. It has all that stuff. That is my full patellar tendonitis routine. I do that on, on day one. Okay. The next day, if I'm feeling sore, I'll do my body weight patellar tendonitis routine, which is also on there. And every single morning, essentially, I wake up, I, I feel my butt. I say, how sore is my glute medius? How sore are my knees? And based on the way I feel, if I'm extremely sore, I do body weight patellar tendonitis exercises. If I'm fresh and I'm feeling fine, then I do the banded uh, patellar tendonitis exercise, and I do actual exercises that are harder and are going to tax my muscles more. Also, I stretch every single day. Every single day, I at least do the couch stretch, the hamstring stretch, and the quad stretch for 60 seconds each, three times through. That is the bare minimum. I do that every single day without fail, okay? Um, that was a lie. I failed yesterday. Okay, but I don't fail normally. Um, so if you want to keep training while you do patellar tendonitis, you have to keep doing your exercises every single day based on how you feel, and you got to stretch. I'm even going. I'm gonna start training twice a day. Okay. Um, Damani just commented on Instagram. I saw that he said jump. He wants that weight training, uh, weight training vertical jump program. You ain't call me ugly though. You better get on there and be like, you ugly ass muff. All right, so yeah, that's how you keep training uh, vertical jump with patellar tendonitis. You gotta do your exercises and you gotta do your stretches every single day. And, and, and when I say that, don't freak out because it doesn't take me long. It doesn't take me long. It takes me less than 30 minutes, but I wake up at 4 a.m. Here's what I do. Wake up at 4 a.m., I go pee, I weigh myself, then I go and I jump on a trampoline for three minutes, then I get some water, then I do my knee exercise for 30 minutes. It's just every single morning, without fail, besides yesterday. Um, next question. Well, Sky says, thank you so much for being patient, answering all of our questions. I apologize if I ask too many. I just love your videos, love your intelligence, man. You are helping more than you know, thanks. Skies. I love your questions. I appreciate your questions. I couldn't do these live Q and A's without people like you asking me questions. So you are honestly helping me out. So thank you for asking questions. You are not being annoying. You are not a bother. I actually appreciate all of you guys asking these questions. Um, from He-Man Sue Kumar Singh. From where can we buy a band? If you go to any of my YouTube videos, you go in the description, it will say um, resources that I use to increase my vertical jump. It'll have bands there. It'll, you can click that. It'll take you to Amazon and um, you could buy the band from there. Um, but I get a commission for that. Let me tell you, if you click on my link, it doesn't cost you anymore, but if you click on my link in my video, I get a commission from what you buy off of Amazon. So if you have feel like helping me out, go to my YouTube. If you're going to buy something from Amazon, go to my video, click the link, and then go to Amazon and buy something. Even if you're buying something that is totally irrelevant, I get a commission for that and it doesn't cost you any more. However, if you want to say, fuck Nathaniel Morton, I don't want him to get any money, then completely go around my link. Don't use my link and just go to Amazon and search Evolution X Resistance Bands and put a Middle finger to Nathaniel Morton. Say he ain't getting no money. You ain't feeding your kittens. All right. Um, next question. From TA. How to do foot, ankle, and toe strength. Help out with jumping. Toe strength. Is that a thing? I never did toe strength. There might be a potential for me to jump higher. I might get my toes up. All right. How to do foot, ankle, and toe strength. I know you can strengthen your ankles. 
I've never done any of those exercises. I'm not even gonna act like I know the answer. So TA, I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna fail you. But I don't know any foot, ankle, or toe strength exercises. Um, but you, if you say help out with jumping, I can tell you that those are the least of your worries. Okay, obviously you gotta make sure your feet are fine, but those are the least of your worries. You really wanna focus on your posterior chain. Your posterior chain is the backside of your body. It's your calves, it's your hamstrings, it's your glutes, your butt, and it's your lower back. Get that up, increase the strength and explosiveness of all of those muscles, as well as your quads and your core, and then you'll see um, great vertical jump gains, okay? So, um, <sighs> those are exercises like squats, deadlifts, kettlebell swings, um, full body compound movements that use more muscle groups at one time, um, dumbbell box jumps, dumbbell squat jumps, those are all gonna be really good to increase the strength and explosiveness of your posterior chain. Um, so sorry, TA, that I failed you right there. Next question. I have a question about progressive overload. I just started training my vertical jump. I am doing weighted jump exercises two times a week. How often should I be increasing the weights or reps? Every new training day, every week, every month? Thanks. I answered this in the last live Q&A. However, most people wouldn't know that because my phone died and I lost it. So. How often should you progressive overload? You should progressive overload every single time that you go into the gym. Let me give you an, an analogy. Let's say you are squatting on the bar, like I have this bar right behind me. On the bar, let's say you have 135 pounds. You put two and a half pounds on each side every single time that you go into the gym. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but after 10 times, after 10 gym sessions, you will have increased the weight by 50 pounds. 2.5 on each side of the bar. That equals five. 2.5 plus 2.5 equals five. I'm bad at math, but even I know that. Five times 10 gym sessions equals 50 pounds that you have put on the bar in 10 gym sessions. If you're, if you're lifting, if you're doing squats every Monday and Thursday like you should, that's one week, that's five weeks, Bad at math. Five weeks, a month, and one week, and you will have increased by 50 pounds. Okay, so progressive overload every single time that you go into the gym. Okay. Next question from Joey Ma. Are hamstrings hamstrings are sorry guys, I got a phone call. Hamstrings are extremely important for vertical jump. I'm gonna have to start doing these lives not on my phone because people keep texting me and calling me and my phone keeps dying. Um, and I only died once. Yes, hamstrings are very important for vertical jump. Um, the best, I actually just uploaded a video on YouTube called the 10 best hamstring exercises that you can do to increase your vertical jump, jump higher and dunk on every single person who is unfortunately in the lane when you come through it. Okay, so go watch that video. It's my most recent video on YouTube besides this live Q&A. Um, from TA, do you do your plyos in three phases, being isometric, eccentric, concentric phases, and how to progress those? I don't do that, but that's probably a really good idea. That's how I set up my... Um, that's how I set up my body weight vertical jump program. The first phase is all isometric. Get your stabilizers right. Get your uh, stabilizing strength um, up to where it needs to be to start doing actual jumps that are going to um, increase your strength and explosiveness of those type 2 muscle fibers. I don't do that, but how to progressive overload those. For eccentric, you can, pro you can progressive over that, overload that by holding the movements for more. So Eccentric, I'm sorry, isometric exercises are where you just do holds. They are like a squat hold, and then you sit there for 30 seconds. It's a lunge hold. It's a glute bridge hold, okay? The way that you progressive overload that is by adding more time. So instead of 30 seconds the one day, do 45 seconds the next day. Or instead of 45 seconds, do a minute. Or instead of 60 seconds, do 61 seconds, 
or 62 seconds, okay? So increase the time for the isometric exercises. For the concentric and eccentric parts, you can add weight or you can add reps or you can decrease rest time in between sets. Um, but the way that you can, you can go slower as you go down, you can progressive overload by trying to be faster every single time. Um, but yeah, that's how you progressive overload those. But no, I don't do my plyos in those three phases. I just do my plyos um, all, to, all together. I don't do any isometric exercises as of now. It probably would be good for me, um, but no, I don't do any uh, isometric holds and then eccentric concentric I obviously do those you do that with a squat eccentric just means the way down and then concentric just means um, on the uh, the explosive on the way up from ball player and do you know what the best vertimax workout is or drills I can do I never use the vertimax um, everybody asked me that question I should get a damn vertimax and, and test it and so I can tell you guys if it works or not. How much do those cost? How much does a Vertimax cost? Like a couple hundred dollars? Um, I'm going to buy it for a hundred. I'm going to sell it on eBay for two hundred. Um, the bet, I'm, I, I've never used one, but I would say in progressive overload every time. Try to do more weight. Try to do more reps. Um, what is a Vertimax? You just, it's essentially like a squat. Like with a toe raise? Like what is a Vertimax? Can somebody clarify in the chat? Um, I'm working out right now. That's why. Ooh, he's hitting a workout while he's watching the live stream. He said I'm making all the gains, none for anybody else. From Jago Rombo. Jay Morant father said he jumped 800 times on a trucker trailer every day for two years to get crazy bounce. How is that even possible? Thought you were supposed to rest. Jay Morant, who's Jay Morant? Is that some famous dude? Is that a ball player? Or is that like your next door neighbor? Who's Jay Morant? But his dad said it. He jumped 800 times on a tractor trailer every day for two years. 800 times every day? Jay Morant's dad is a liar. Or else, Jay Morant is a fucking animal. You are supposed to rest. I would not do that. Um, maybe he has crazy genetics and his body got used to that and he increases bounce i don't know find a tractor trailer jump on it 800 times see what it does to your vertical should you lift heavy when training yes you should lift heavy when training um it depends on what you're training for if you lift heavy when training you're going to be focused on strength in the one to five rep range as heavy as you can go you're going to be increasing your strength of your muscles Best way to improve your squat and deadlift. Progressive overload through phases. You need to do periodization. So I have a strength coach for this. So I really don't pay attention to what he gives me. I just do it. He says five sets of five deadlifts and I do it. Um, best way to improve your squat and your deadlift. Here's what I would do. I would do... I'm trying to think what he has me do. I know you got a progressive overload. You got to be trying to do more weight, but you don't want to try to do more weight every time. You don't want to be trying to go for a max every time. So what he has me do is different rep ranges and different percentages of my max. And I'm probably going to fail you here, but he has me do like 70% of my max for like, for like, like five sets of eight. Then... He, do, he has me do 75% of my max for like five sets of six. Then I do 80% of my max. Then I do um, 85, then 90, then 95. Then I do 100% of my max. Then I try to beat my max and get a new max. Once I get a new max, because after all that, after all that progressive overload, you are going to get a new max. We're still talking about squat and deadlift. How to increase your squat and increase your deadlift. After you do 75% and then 80, 85, 90, 95%, 100%, and then you try to go for 105% and try to get a new max, then you restart the percentages at 75% of your new max. So let's say my max on deadlift is 465 pounds. 
then I do all that stuff, then I get past it and I hit 475 pounds, then I do 75% of 475 pounds instead of 465. And my percentages, I just go back up the ladder. Okay, so that's how you increase your squat and deadlift. I believe that's what he has me do. I should have him on here one time. A Vertimax is basically a jump pad. Oh, I know what a Vertimax is. Yeah, that shit works. A Vertimax is basically a jump pad and it has resistance bands attached to your waist that pulls you down, making it harder for you to jump. So what was your question before? Um, do you know what the best Vertimax workout is or drills that I could do? Okay, so if it's attached to you, you can obviously do different types of jumps, right? You could do split leg lunge jumps. You could do squat jumps. What else can you do? Can you like get on your knees and do a kneeling jump to your feet and then a tuck jump? Can you do all that stuff or is it um, this live channel stay on YouTube? Yeah, I'm gonna put this one on YouTube. I'm gonna put it back. So if you have to go now, if you gotta go take your girlfriend on a date, I'm gonna put it on YouTube, okay? I'm gonna go for about 45 minutes so we got five minutes left. I love doing these lives though. Maybe I'll go for like close to an hour or something. I don't know. Um, but I do have a wedding rehearsal to be at and if I'm late, um, that's, uh, they're, they're going to be angry at me. The best, let me focus ADHD. Okay. The best Vertimax workout. I can't, those are all, he said, yeah, those are all drills I do, but I thought you had other ones. Okay. Um, I mean, it's just going to be the same plyometrics that you could do in one spot. You're limited to you're limited to some stuff. You got split leg lunge jump. You got kneeling jump to your feet. You got vertical jumps. You got tuck jumps. Um, can you hold dumbbells while you do it? If you can hold dumbbells as well as the resistance bands, I would start doing some drop sets. And I would do dumbbell squat jumps with the bands attached to your hips. I would do... Um, a set of 10 jumps with the dumbbells, I would drop the dumbbells and I would do another set. So start doing drop sets or start doing supersets. Do um, uh, five reps of kneeling jump. Man, do a, do a circuit, do a giant set. Do five reps of all of those. Five reps of split leg lunge jumps. Immediately go to, into five reps of kneeling jump to your feet. Immediately into five reps of tuck jump. Immediately into five reps of squat jumps, okay? Get crazy with it. But I'm sorry, I, I feel like I'm failing you. I can't um, think of anything else. From Humayun Khan, I feel really sad that an honest coach like you have less popular. You helped me increase my vert a lot. Thanks. Here's the truth, ladies and gentlemen, because I get this a lot. And I really, really, really do appreciate your comments like that. It literally fills my heart and soul when people say you should be more popular or you should have more subscribers on YouTube. I get that all the time. So I don't understand how Nathaniel Morton doesn't have a million subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, here is why I don't have a million subscribers. I am not yet good enough to have a million subscribers. I need to get better. I need to add more value to people. And I'm, I'm adding a lot of value to you. However, if I don't have a million subscribers, it's not because the world is unfair. It's because I'm not good enough yet. Yet. See, see, I need to do more videos on mindset because just because you're not good now, just because you don't have a million subscribers now doesn't mean that you won't. I fucking will. I will have a million subscribers and I'll still be doing these lives and I'll still be responding to comments and I'll still be adding value and I'll still be fucking up the game because... That is what I am here to do on this planet. I am here to inspire and add value and entertain and fucking give all of myself to all of you and everybody in the world so that other, so that I can make their lives better, so that they can make other people's lives better because everybody watching this stream, people look up to you. And as you grow and get better, people are going to be looking up to you. So my job here on earth is to inspire you so that you can inspire other people so that we just have this ripple effect of fucking inspiration and everybody is doing what they are meant to do here on earth. Sorry guys, my mom called me. When people say, Nate Morton should have a million subscribers. 
What, by the way, drop in the chat. When I get a phone call, does it stop the stream or what? Um, if people say Nate Morton should have a million subscribers, I am just not yet good enough. I don't have the skills yet to, to have a million subscribers. I haven't learned how to get my YouTube channel out to enough people. And once I do that, I will have a million. But thank you so much for that positive compl compliment. I really, I really like that. William, when you're training your vertical, do you want to lift heavy and explosive or light and explosive? Um, you want both. So um, always, always, always try to be explosive as you can when you're squatting. Even if I have 315 pounds on the bar, I am trying to move the bar as fast as I can from point A to point B. Always be explosive with good form. But you do want to do lighter weights and be explosive too. So one day in the gym, I'll go in on a Monday, I'll do squats, I'll do heavy squats, five sets of five, trying to be as explosive as I can, but it's heavier weight, very heavy weight. Then the next day, I'll do lighter weight, about 50% of my max, and I will focus on that explosiveness because then I can move the bar even faster. So always be explosive, but definitely do heavier weight to build your strength and lighter weight to build your explosiveness, but always be training explosive. Um, next question. <sighs> We are missing you, bro. I'm right here. Guillermo Tapia. That's my boy. Very, Guillermo, I appreciate you. You are always, always, always very active on my channel. Ball player and sorry that I am asking a lot. This is the last one. How about the best drills for explosiveness? Um, you're not asking a lot. You are the only reason I can do these lives because if you didn't ask a lot of questions, I wouldn't have nothing to say. I'd just be sitting here looking at my cell phone camera saying, what the hell happened to your hairline? You better talk to your barber. Um, best drills for explosiveness. Sprints. Sled pushes. Depth jumps. Weighted squat jumps, but for explosiveness, sprints and sled pushes are very overlooked. Sprints and sled pushes. Okay, not too many people do actual sprints besides when they're playing in their basketball game. So those are the ones that I would focus on. Sprints, sled pushes, squat jumps, and depth jumps. And, and depth jumps are more for reactive, ex, reactive strength and speed, but they still work. From... What time is it? It is 2.37. I'm gonna be late. That's all right, they can wait for me. Next question. From Jerry Magorambo. From my plyo, I start by jumping on my toes for 10 minutes, then I do resistance bench squats. I start with 20 reps, then add five reps every set till five sets, then depth jumps, four sets of 10, then tuck jumps. Jerry, that's good. You start by jumping on your toes for 10 minutes. That's good. Long, I guess that's a warm up for you. Um, yeah, I mean, that's good training. Um, you're progressive overloading, you're killing it. The stream just buffers. Thank you, Joey Ma. My mommy called me because she's actually supposed to drive me to get my car because it's in the shop. Um, but sadly, I'm gonna make my mother wait. YouTube Live is more important. Um, four, Jerry, four sets of 10, then I squat warm up, then 135, then I do five sets of five with 225. Okay, that's good. Make sure you're being as explosive as possible. Make sure you're progressive overloading, trying to build your strength and explosiveness. I do that routine Monday and Friday. That's good. Um, you need to stretch and foam roll and play basketball or your sport on the other days. How about burpees? Um, I do burpees. I do burpees um, strictly for high intensity interval training. I do them for hit cardio. I do them to have six pack abs. Um, I don't, they're not gonna help you with your vertical jump. Burpees will not help with a vertical jump besides very, very slightly after you start training. How long does it take to see results after you start training? Vertical jump training, you could start to see results within two weeks. It's not gonna happen overnight, but the, the workout that you do today in about two weeks, you're gonna to start to really see the results from that, maybe a little bit quicker. Um, 
But yeah, you have to break down your muscles in the gym, hit a hard workout, and then let your body fully recover. Could even happen in a, in a week, but um, you, you see them pretty quick. See them pretty quick. I'm going to take, I'm gonna do this live Q&A for one hour, a little bit under one hour. I'm gonna stop it, and then I'm going to assess whether or not that was too long, okay? Because maybe this is too long, but I'm having fun, so we're gonna do an hour. From Joey Ma, if I'm doing plyos and weight training in the same workout, should I do plyos first? After weight training, I'm just too too tired to do plyos. Yeah, you can do them first. Um, for me, I, I do all kinds of training, man. I do all three. This is the thing. Sometimes I do my plyos first. Um, sometimes... I do my weight training first, um, and sometimes I superset them. But if you're too tired after your weight training, know thyself. You could do your plyos first. So do your plyos and then hit your weight training. So, yeah. Next question. I'm only going to do a couple more. Can 100 calf raises a day increase my vert? 100 calf raises a day will increase your vert. However, you're eventually going to plateau and 100 calf raises a day will not increase your vertical anymore. Calves are important when trying to increase your vertical jump. But what is more important than calves is your posterior chain. Okay, your posterior chain is everything when it comes to increase your, increasing your vertical jump. So it's not only your calves, but it's your hamstrings, it's your glutes, it's your lower back, and then you have to focus on quads and core too. If you increase the strength and explosiveness in your legs, in your core, and your lower back, you will increase your vertical jump. Okay, Increase the strength and explosiveness in your legs, your core, your lower back, then you, you increase your vertical jump. Okay, But 100 calf raises a day... Um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help, but not as much as you would think it would help or want it to. Next question. Nate, whenever I squat heavy, the bar digs into my shoulder and causes me pain. What should I do? I answered this question the other day. If you're squatting and the bar digs into your shoulders and gives you pain, you just got to toughen up. Okay? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, wear a hoodie. You can get one of them little noodle foam things that wraps around the bar, um, or you could do some shoulder shrugs and some upright rows and get some muscles back here in your traps. Get some meat on your neck, and then you'll you'll they won't hurt as much. But wear a hoodie, wear a hoodie, um, or just tuck a pillow in your hoodie. Say fuck it. Okay. Next question. Can I substitute basketball in my plyometric training? And do two times a week weight training. Can I substitute bl basketball in my plyometric training and do two times a week weight training? So you're doing weight training twice a week. We'll call it Monday and Thursday. The other days, you're doing basketball instead of plyometrics. Yeah, that'll work. Um, but if you're playing basketball, you want to make sure that you are doing a lot of sprinting and jumping. Like how much rebounding and sprinting are you actually doing? Are you actually going up for rebounds? Are you actually um, hustling as hard as you can? Or are you just sitting on the three-point line waiting for somebody to pass you the ball to hit a three? Okay, because then you're not really doing much plyometrics. So be honest with yourself. How, many plyome how much plyometrics are you actually doing? From William. Thanks for this Q&A. Very helpful. You're welcome, William. Thank you for being in here and participating. Um, all right. I'm going to do one more question. Okay, one more question. And then I'm going to leave you all to have a great weekend without me. Does playing basketball at a high level with lots of running and dunks count as plyometrics? That's too close to the last one, so I'll do another question. Does playing basketball at a high level with lots of running and dunks count as plyometrics? Yes, it does. Remember, some of the best plyometrics are sprints and max vertical jumps. So if you're, ju if you're really jumping up to rebound and to do layups and, to, and you're actually jumping a decent amount during your games and you're sprinting during games, then yes, that counts as plyometrics. This will be my last question. One more question. If I train, as you said, for the next six months, and now I can only touch the rim, what would be my results? By the way, I'm 15 years old, five foot 11. If I train as you teach me to train for the next six months, 
I can only touch the rim right now. What will be my results in six months? You, you could, if you're really training hard, the way that I tell you to train, increase your strength and your explosiveness in your posterior chain. Um, you could gain six inches in six months and that'd be, that'd be, uh, that'd be an average number. If you train harder, you could gain a little more. You could, an inch a month is possible, especially if you are a beginner or you haven't stimulated your muscles the way that you can if you're really doing in intense vertical jump training. Um, so if you're training hard for six months, you, you can gain six inches in a month, okay? Um, okay, last few things I'm gonna leave you all. Isaiah says, don't forget that free weighted jump training program. Ladies and gentlemen, my weighted jump training program is $50 on my website. I will give it to you for free right now. If you go to my Instagram, you follow me on Instagram at Nathaniel Morton and you comment jump on my most recent post and you say jump, you're ugly as heck or something nice. That'd be, that'd be cool too. But comment, jump on my most recent Instagram post, follow me, and I will send you the free um, the free weight training program. Okay, weight training program. Also, comment, jump in this if you want the free body weight training program. Um, last thing, and then I'm leaving. Jerry says, I don't want to lose my bounce when my season starts. So would you think it's wise to squat heavy once a week to keep my strength? I would think that is wise. Um... However, while you're in season, I would significantly lower the volume of your plyometrics. So volume means how, how, how much you do. So if you're doing a lot of plyometrics right now, I would do significantly less. Only do your weight training once to twice a week. I would do twice a week, two times a week weight training. I would, I wouldn't go to failure as often. I would only go to failure I would still go to failure. I would, I would still go to failure. Um, I am the type of person that I'm going to lift as heavy as I possibly can. I'm going to lift weights until my, my eyeballs fall out of my head. And then I'm going to go in my game, whether I'm sore or not, and I'm gonna fuck you up and I am going to win. I'm going to be better than you and I just had a fucking workout. So that needs to be your mentality. I, fuck, I got one hour of sleep and I'll still fucking beat you, okay? People make a lot of excuses, ladies and gentlemen. I will leave you with this. People make so many excuses, and I work as a teacher. That some of the excuses that kids say, oh, I got jeans on. Um, bro, I don't, got my be I don't got my basketball shoes on. Motherfucker, I will beat you in a dress and heels. I will fucking win every single time. Okay, not every time. It's cool if you lose, just as long as you gave your best effort. But don't make excuses. Who cares? I will beat you in jeans. I will, I will, I will, I'll beat you in a damn fucking Eskimo jacket, okay? No excuses. Do what you need to do. Do your weight training, but lessen the volume of plyometrics during your season. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that, I'm going to leave you. Thank you so much to everybody who is active here on my live q and i I'm going to start doing more of these live Q&As. I will set a time like... Wednesdays at 7 p.m. or something like that. Um, I'll set that in the future so I will let you guys know I'm going to go live maybe even twice a week now. I'll probably go live twice a week um, just so I can add value to all of you and grow the community. But other than that, go to Instagram, follow me, and comment jump on my most recent post and I will send you a free weight training vertical jump pr program. Comment jump here on this live stream. I will send you a free body weight vertical jump training program. Like, subscribe, comment, any other questions. If you weren't watching this live, post it, comment down below. Um, he said, I comment on your Instagram. How will I get the program? I'm going to DM you. Okay. I'm, go I'm going to DM you. If you, if you post it on my Instagram, I'm going to see that i'm going to direct message you on instagram and i'll give you the program okay so all right everybody thank you so much have a beautiful weekend be safe and i will see you guys next time how do i end this okay now you guys get to watch me try to figure out how to end this live stream mute microphone nope that's not it what if i hit the x is that gonna fucking delete it again
Hmm. Can't wait to watch this part again. What is this? That's how you change the thing thing. X. Are you sure you want to stop live streaming? If you fucking delete my live stream, YouTube, I'm gonna come to your headquarters. I'm gonna ask you 